Hello, I'm John Shepard and in this short video we're going to take a look at some of the key points of block clearance and acceleration. Now I am primarily a long and triple jump coach, however I do coach sprints and I've been asked quite a few times to make a video on starting and acceleration. And because one of my group members was running 60 meters recently, I began to study start mechanics in more detail and consequentially producing this video has actually helped me as well. We're going to take a look at some of the key positions for acceleration, shin angle, body angle and foot position for example. Let's take a look at some action from the British Indoor Championships and some of the 60 meter runners and you can identify some of the positions required to get a great block clearance and accelerative phase. I've created freeze frames at the first, second, third and fourth steps away from the blocks and you can identify the drive and the clearance and the body angles that are necessary to get distance and velocity over the starting steps. Of course in a race of eight there's going to be variation but if you look at the athlete who's leading on the fourth step you'll see his body position is superior to many of the others. I've repositioned the clip and we're going to now focus on the low heel recovery aspect of sprinting star technique. Study the athletes and you'll note that some of them are keeping their heels closer to the track than others and there's less back lift although it does look like the majority are getting away pretty quickly. Also look at the toe down position of the foot on the second step where the athlete in a way falls onto that foot in order to create and benefit from its acceleration. One thing that you must do is not rush your acceleration. You have to maintain the correct shapes and the correct positioning and the extension of the leg behind you to drive you away as well as that low heel recovery and slightly larger arm action over the initial steps. Notice the varied positions in the start position. Many coaches will advocate a flatter back rather than a rounder shouldered one as you're able to push more directly through the spine. The athlete on the near side is more muscling his start and he's not achieving the extension positions that are recommended. The fastest accelerators will be those that can impart the most amount of force against the track surface with the greatest turnover. However, a degree of control is still needed in order to make those initial steps long enough as well as powerful enough and quick enough. So now we're looking at Jonathan Grant from my training group and we were working on his start recently. And you can see, particularly in the first two shots of him in action, that he was snatching, grabbing at his first few steps and not driving sufficiently enough and getting the correct body angles either. We worked on getting a fuller extension on the first block drive. But then on this effort, he falls out of shape, dropping to his left and cannot maintain the drive. He's also rocking from side to side. So that needs addressing too. Here he is working on his start with another athlete and running against somebody can often change the dynamics. But here he manages to maintain relatively good positions. I think it's after about three to four steps where he lifts his feet just a little too much and doesn't keep thinking about acceleration Rather, he's focusing on getting up into maximum velocity running too soon. Here's another effort, and we're going to see in a few seconds a comparison with the British trial sprinters. And although it's difficult to tell, it does look like the championship sprinters are achieving a better angle on their first step away from the blocks. And it also looks like the angle is also better carried through on the subsequent steps. So how long should your acceleration phase last? Well those of you who've been watching videos on the channel for a while will know that I interviewed sub 10 second coach and one of the top sprint coaches in the world Jonas Dudu and he explained 
that acceleration is very much specific to the athlete and also specific to the time in the training year. So I suggest that you go and check out that particular video to take on board more of what he's saying. However, what I've picked up from Jonas and from coaching sprinters is that you don't want to rush the acceleration. You need to be confident and comfortable in the amount of time it's going to take you to accelerate to maximum velocity and then to change into upright running gradually and continue onwards towards the finish line. The length of acceleration can also vary dependent on the length of the race, i.e. A 100m sprinter may employ a longer accelerated phase than a 60m sprinter. It looks to me in this 60m race that the freeze frame at about 35-40m identifies the point when acceleration ends and max velocity running starts. And you can see by the 6.64 time that these guys weren't exactly hanging around. Hopefully the comments in this video and suggestions and ideas and technical points will help you with your starting and your acceleration. Good luck with your training and competition and do subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to find out more about the free lap timing system, drop me a message.